Energy supply is one of the greatest challenges of this century. All over the world, scientists and engineers are developing innovative solutions to secure our future standard of living. JET is located near Oxford, a city famous for both its university and excellence in science and technology. The nearby village of Cullum is home to the joint European Taurus, the world's largest fusion device. This experiment is paving the way for power plants to generate energy from fusion, the process powering the sun and the stars. On Earth, two variations of hydrogen, tritium and deuterium can be fused together, releasing lots of energy. The fusion process is safe and generates no long-term radioactive waste with any activated material recycled within 100 years. In order to conduct this fusion research, in 1978, scientists and engineers built a 12-meter-high donut-shaped structure called a tokamak, in which plasma is heated to 100 million degrees, 10 times hotter than the center of the sun. The design of JET allows it to adapt as new results become available, exploring new avenues of research in both physics and technology. For example, tungsten absorbs less gas than carbon and may be the ultimate material that is allowed to touch the plasma, but this has to be proved. JET is able to do this. To maintain and upgrade the tokamak, it is necessary to stop operations for a few months. During the most recent shutdown, all of the 4,500 carbon tiles inside the machine were replaced with tiles made from tungsten or beryllium. Altogether, 86,000 components have been changed. Radioactivity and beryllium dust make the inside of the vessel a hostile environment for the maintenance team. So, in order to carry out this maintenance work safely, a remote handling office was established in 1978. Since then, various tools have been designed and used, such as booms, manipulators and articulated arms. Currently, almost all work inside the jet vacuum vessel is performed remotely. In other words, a human operator replaces tiles from within the remote handling control room with nothing in his hands other than the artificial arms of the master controls. This master talks to the slave robot called the mascot that is positioned in the vessel and is surrounded by the necessary tools that are provided by a second articulated boom. The mascot will replicate precisely all the movements the operator is performing. A camera attached to a second boom allows us to get a glimpse of this process. To manage a shutdown of this magnitude, the remote handling team started to plan every signal necessary step two years in advance. Each task was carefully planned and detailed procedures were produced, such as to put in a screw, tighten a bolt, or remove a tile. During this shutdown, 40 technicians and engineers from the remote handling team worked almost non-stop seven days a week, 20 hours a day. The operators need thorough training 
to be able to drive the boom without damaging the machine. Therefore, a spare mascot is used on a regular basis to train newcomers and the existing team alike. Training future operators involves various activities. Newcomers first get some practice through virtual simulation. The most challenging tasks are completed and verified in so-called mock-up trials, with the real remote handling equipment commanded from the remote handling control room. The trials are conducted on a mock-up facility comprising three quarters of the Taurus in-vessel environment with both dummy components and also spare and prototype real components. This mock-up facility is to test all remote handling procedures before working on the real components. Knowledge of remote handling is vital to the next step in fusion research. ITER in Cadarache, France is the first international project designed to determine the scientific and technological feasibility of a full-scale fusion power plant. The training carried out at JET helps ensure that tomorrow's technicians will be ready to operate ITER. Experiments in remote handling have become common in JET and help European engineers to develop new remote handling tools for ITER. In Tampere, 120 kilometers northwest of Helsinki, VTT has one of the best European and worldwide laboratories on scientific technology. One of their activities, together with TUT, Tampere University of Technology, is to develop remote handling for ITER under the Eurotom Association TECS program. Using virtual reality tools, VTT and TUT engineers are developing new techniques for surfacing ITER. On ITER, 10,000 to 50,000 kilogram components must be manipulated remotely compared to the 100 kilogram capacity on JET. The diverter test platform facility called DTP2 is a necessary stage in developing and testing the maintenance robots and remote handling operations which will be used for replacement of the ITER diverter. TTP2 took four years to build at a cost of around 4 million euros. The diverter is located on the lower part of the vessel and is made up of 54 individual cassettes. Its goal is to purify the plasma. The DTP2 facility is a full-scale ITER diverter mock-up, replicating the geometry of the ITER vacuum vessel and diverter. The facility will detail all the remote handling procedures for the ITER diverter maintenance and replacement, providing vital input to the final specifications. The capture, removal and manipulation of the diverter cassette can all be realistically tested. Moreover, Virtual models are used to complement the camera shots and to provide the operator with images that would otherwise be unattainable. Virtual models are used to generate and control the movements of the robots when human accuracy is insufficient. The DTP2 diverter cassette, a heavy metallic component weighing some 10 tons, is the basic element of the diverter. As it becomes radioactive, it must be maintained remotely and young researchers in Tempere are already learning to do this. The diverter cassette multifunction mover will carry a 3.5 meter long diverter cassette with its end effector and move it inside the torus. The manipulator arm operates tools to lock and unlock the cassette. For ITER assembly and maintenance, it will also be necessary to cut and weld inside the vacuum vessel. At the Lapin Ranta University of Technology, a welding robot and a cutting robot have also been designed.
A second version of the welding robot has been built and is undergoing tests by the researchers of the Lapin Rata University of Technology. Here you see the first cutting robot, which is also in the testing phase. All this expertise acquired by European researchers is a significant contribution to the success of ITER, the largest worldwide facility on energy research, with 50% being financed by Europe.